Now, you may remember last week, I said I bought 14 laptops from one seller that were advertised as all having motherboard faults. So we looked at number one last week, and this little beauty here is number two. So as you can see, this is just the bare chassis and the motherboard is inside. He's used the screen and the keyboard and the battery for somebody else. There's also no adapter with it either. So what I have here is a motherboard and this is supposedly faulty. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this out, I'm gonna take some pictures of it and we're gonna troubleshoot it in the usual way. So why don't you come along for the spin? I've removed the motherboard completely from the laptop and taken a few pictures. So you can see here, this is our DC input jack and this is where it meets the motherboard. So I found a 20 volt Lenovo adapter and I've connected it into this. So what we're gonna do is zoom in on the input section right here where we always start and we're gonna start taking some measurements right here. I found a schematic for this, so I thought it might be more fun to work it along with the schematic. So here's JDC in one, which corresponds to our JDC in one here. So we have five pins and five pins. This mark indicates pin one. So on pin one and two, let's just zoom out a little bit. So that's ADP in. So the two of these are connected in together. That's the two of these together. That's our input. We've got three and four, which are also connected together. And as you can see, these are our two black wires. So this is our grounds. And number five seems to be some sort of ID pin. See it here, APD ID. And that's the one wire on its own is the blue one right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure for 20 volts at this point. So we introduce our digital multimeter. In volts DC, we place our black probe to ground and place our red probe to one of the input pins, which is one of these two right here. So I place my probe on this pin here and I find that there is 20.32 volts at this point. So what that tells me is the voltage from the adapter is making it through the DC connector jack and onto the motherboard. I've marked in my 20.32 volts here and the path which goes on to the next component here which is PF101. Okay, so PF101 we can see right here. This is a fuse. It says it's a 7 amp fuse, 24 volt DC. So what we want to try and work out here is, is that fuse blown? So once again with my black probe on the ground and measuring for DC, I place my red probe to the other side here and I measure there's 20.32 volts at this point also. So my fuse is good. So following along our schematic, th this is our fuse right here. The next components in line are these two parallel inductors. Now they correspond to these two inductors right here. These very rarely fail. So again, testing for voltage in DC mode. I place my probe here and I find that there's 20.32 volts DC at this point also. After the two inductors, this is then referred to as V in. So I need to find V in further down the schematic. So let's scroll down and find V in. Okay, so V in is here. And as we can see, V in comes onto the four drain pins of PQ301. And PQ301 is a P-channel MOSFET. Now, I've marked in the pins of the first MOSFET here. So these are our four drain pins, which correspond to our four drain pins here. These are pins one, two, and three, which correspond to these pins here, which are our source pins. And then pin number four is our gate. Now, obviously the way the P-channel MOSFET should work is the gate pin should be low to turn it on and that should allow the 20.32 volts from our drain to our source. But when I measure on the source pin right here, I find that there's 19.76 volts here. And what's sort of unusual is when I measure the gate pin, if I place my probe here, I find that there's 19.76 on this also. So that's just a little unusual. The next component in line here, as you can see from the schematic, is PQ302. And that corresponds to this IC right here. So this is another P-channel MOSFET, and I'm just going to mark in the pins on that now. 
So what we have is we have our three source pins here, which corresponds to one, two, three on this. We have a gate pin, which corresponds to pin four here. And then on the other side, we have our four drain pins. Now, as you can see here, the next component is our current sense resistor. So this point here, the four drain pins is essentially our main power rail then. So what we really need to know is, is our 20.32 volts getting through these and giving us our main power rail voltage. However, when I place my probe to the four drain pins here, which is this part of the circuit, I find that there's zero volts here. So for some reason, the system is choosing to shut down the input voltage and we need to find out why that is. I switched off all power to the laptop at this point before I started troubleshooting in diode mode. So given that our 20.32 volts was not making it through to our main power rail, I wanted to check and see if there was a fault in the main power rail. So I introduced my multimeter in diode mode, which looks like this on my multimeter. I placed my red probe to ground and I placed my black probe to the drain pins of the second MOSFET, which is here and it corresponds to this right here. And when I measured at this position in diode mode, I measured 0 0.001 volts. So it seems we have a short on our main power rail. Now, if you've been watching, you know how we deal with this. So how do we flush out a shorted component on the main power rail? Answers in the comments below. I'm going to bring you straight on to it next. Well, the method of flushing out a shorted component, obviously, is voltage injection. So let me show you how I set this up. We know that we have a short after this point. So I, what I decided to do was to find that current sense resistor and inject after here. So that current sense resistor is actually on the other side of the board. So you can see it here, PR302. This is PR302 here. So we want to introduce our power supply. And I'm going to connect it to ground with my black wire. And I'm going to connect my red wire to bring in the voltage that we're injecting to this point here, which is this point right here. So what do we start with the voltage? Well, I normally start with something really low because it could be the case that wherever the short is, that it's shorting down to a 3.3 volt circuit or a 1 volt circuit. Uh, so we have to be careful that we just don't go ahead and shove 19 volts down into it because that could send 19 volts down into one of the 1 volt circuits or down the RAM circuit or something like that. So I'm going to start it off with half an amp and 1 volt. Now after I injected one volt with a current limit of half an amp, uh, I touched around the board but nothing got warm. I certainly couldn't feel anything getting warm. I wasn't surprised because that's only a very small amount of power to be injecting. So uh, I decided to bring it up step by step. So the next step up for me was just one volt at one amp. When I did this, I was touching around the board and I felt one area that was getting slightly warm, I thought. So I decided to increase it just a little more up to 1.5 volts and 1.5 amps current limit. And when I did that, a particular section of the board started heating up. And I have a video of that that I can show you now. This is a close-up of the section of the board that was heating up. So can you tell me by visual inspection here which component is damaged? Well, maybe I should have done a better visual inspection earlier on, but I, I don't know if I would have seen this without the microscope. But it certainly looks like that capacitor has a mark on it here. It looks like it is damaged. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some flux on top of this. I'm going to inject the voltage back in again, and I'm going to see what happens. Okay, that's me turning on the power supply, and what you can see is immediately the flux starts to evaporate from the top of that capacitor. Now, I'm not injecting a huge amount of voltage so it's not evaporating as quickly as you might see in some other videos but I'm just going to do it one more time here just to show you so this is obviously the component that is carrying that current to ground you can see it there once again so the flux evaporates from it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my heat gun and I'm going to remove that component just in case anybody's interested I took a quick video of me desoldering this capacitor as you can see it was 
quite firmly stuck to the board so what I had to do was I had to douse it in more flux and I had to get a soldering iron and reflow the solder on both ends to try and give it a helping hand but once I did that I then came in with my hot air gun and my tweezers you'll see it starting to melt here watch it yeah see it's starting to melt there and then it came off I don't know why it was being so difficult but that's the capacitor removed so we just need to check now and see if our short is still present so with that capacitor removed I want to check in diode mode again and just verify as to whether the short has gone or not so we place our red probe to ground once again and my black probe to the drain pins of the second MOSFET which once again is pointing to this section here and when I measured here I found that the reading was now 0 0.357 you might remember previously it was 0 0.001 with that shorted capacitor on the board after removing the shorted capacitor it's now 0 0.357 so that looks more like what we should be getting so now is the fun bit we get to plug it in and see if it comes on I'm back at my workbench with this motherboard so I've connected to the power I've connected back in the power button and I've hooked it up to an external display because obviously this was how it arrived at my desk so I have no screen with it to test but we can connect an external display to check it with so I've got my HDMI cable plugged in now this is our power button so I just press my power button oh and you can see we've got a green light so that looks pretty good and it's booting so I think that's checking for a boot device, yeah. There's obviously no boot device because it came with no hard drive. But this is now a working motherboard. So that's the second of my 14, um, and this one is now working as well. Obviously it's it's a pretty old motherboard, so it's not really any good. Maybe I might give it away as a prize to my million subscriber or something like that. I have one more thing I wanted to check on this. You might remember earlier on, we were getting sort of ambiguous readings on the gates of these two MOSFETs. As a last step, I just want to take down the settings for what these P-channel MOSFETs should have on their gate when they're working. So let's do that now. Back at our motherboard, I've taken down the voltages at the pins of the two input MOSFETs when it is working. So as you can see here, we had our 20.32 volts on our drain pins. These drain pins are all connected together, obviously, but I've just marked in, just in case there's any ambiguity, what you should expect to find at each pin. And similar for the source pins here, which are also connected together. But we have 20.32 volts on the drain pins of the input of this P-channel MOSFET. On the output, because it's now switched on, we have the full 20.32 volts. The gate pin is 8.62 volts. So the voltage that is sent to the gate of this MOSFET to switch it on in this configuration is 8.62 volts. Similarly, on the second P-channel MOSFET, the gate receives the same 8.62 volts. And its input, obviously, is the source pins of the first MOSFET, so it has 20.32 volts on its three source pins. And then the output, because this MOSFET is now switched on also, is also 20.32 volts, and this is our main power rail. So that might be useful to know just for the future. So that's my video for this week, guys. I'll be back with something else next week. Please like and subscribe, and leave any comments you have down below. Thanks for watching.